Hello. Today I'm going to talk about a film that I mentioned not too long ago when I got the Blu-ray of it. That is um, UHF. I um, also have an <clears throat> original DVD. Um, still have it. Um, yeah, this is a... This is just a great film. Um, <clears throat> I really enjoy just the sort of, a, I guess, the uniqueness of, in a way, um, of a film like this. You know, um, just with the sort of brand of humor that comes with it, and um, <clears throat> it's sort of like a sketch comedy uh, in a way. You know, a lot of sketches regarding. You know, while an overall plot goes on because of the various, like, shows that, uh, happens, as well as the various daydreams that, uh, the main character, played by Weird Al Yankovic, um, George Newman, um, Newman being obviously a reference to, uh, uh, Alfred E. Newman, um, <coughs> and uh, from Mad Magazine, um, Back when they actually made magazines, you could actually buy it at stores, but you can't do that now. It's all online. Uh, but, you know, the uh, you know, overall premise of this film is, you know, um, you know, George Newman and his friend Bob, you know, they keep getting, uh, you know, fired because they keep getting the same jobs together, which is, you know, fine and all. I've been friends for a good amount of years. Um, but... <clears throat> You know, George keeps daydreaming. He has all these, this very active imagination, and he keeps getting fired uh, as a result. He's not, like, not able to hold down a job. And then one one day, his uh, uh, uncle uh, uh, gets a, uh, or wins a TV station uh, <clears throat> in a poker game. And uh, it's a UHS station, which stands for uh, ultra, ultra High Frequency. I'm not going to go into the depths of all that, because, you know, UHF, VHF, and all that. I'm not going to do that, because that's what this kind of, really, this channel's about. <clears throat> but, you know, that was a thing that, obviously existed at one point and it still does sort of to this day but you know it's mostly like with antenna like the tv if you have antenna instead of like cable or satellite or anything of the sort yeah uhf vhf sort of it still exists but not like how it used to be you know and this station u62 um Basically, they, have, they just run old shows. First show that we see that they've got is Mr. Ed. And so to try and, you know, being the guy who's going to run the, uh, you know, run the station for his uncle, he and Bob are going to, you know, be the guys who would, are overall in charge of the operations of it and what goes on and all that. And, you know, he wants to sort of, like, create some new programming to make it pretty interesting and not just same old, same old, you know, give some new life into it. And that's not bad. So he has his own show, like Uncle Matthew's Clubhouse. And, um... It, yeah, it's... it's that, that, whole, that whole thing, those scenes... Just very interesting, you know. He's he's having fun, you know, but then uh, kids that are there aren't all that enthralled to be there, and uh, yeah. Uh, suffice it to say, Uncle Nutsy's clubhouse doesn't last too long. Uh, he sends a he delivers a package over to Channel Eight, comp competitive, uh, you know, network or channel. And, uh, 
I'm, the cast alone, I'm just gonna is just fantastic. You know, obviously you got Weird Al, Kevin McCarthy as the villain of the uh, film, uh, R.J. Fletcher, uh, David Bowe as Bob, Michael Richards is uh, Stanley Spadowski, who is the probably like the very best character of the whole film. Um, <clears throat> You know, Weird Al is the lead, and he co-wrote this film with the director and his manager, Jay Levy. But Michael Richards as Stanley Spadowski is just the best. You know, if you have not seen this film, uh, I don't think I could ever really uh, do justice to it. his character. He's just, he's just fantastic. He's hilarious. Um. And in so many ways, you know, obviously he's known for Kramer, but this is pre-Seinfeld. You know, he did this film before he did Seinfeld. And some of the stuff we see in this film, you know, would sort of go over into uh, Kramer a bit. Uh, and... Uh, Fran Drescher, the nanny, she's in this. The secretary who, been, you know, she wants to do uh, news uh, stuff. And she gets to have the opportunity to do that. Um, Victoria Jackson's in this as uh, Terry, uh, George's girlfriend. <clears throat> and, yeah. Um, so, so uh, Cooney. Um, Daddy Watanabe, who... Um, well, known for 16 candles he uh is uh, in charge of like a, a karate school or uh, it's at the exact same place that george lives and as a result he, uh, apparently uh, in a subplot that weird al said you know in the commentary that it was supposed to be revealed his character of uh, cooney was supposed to be uh george's uh to, or to imply that he's his landlord. Hey guys, he was going to say, like, the rent's going to be late. And, yeah. But all these characters are so out there and different, and and it just works for this film. Um, there's Philo, who, like, he lives at the U-62 station. Um, yeah, this is just a fantastic movie. Um, of course, you know, Stanley Spadowski really loves his mop. Um, you know, he emphasizes how important it is, you know, that, you know, he and that mop, uh, he got that when he was eight years old and hadn't been apart. Um, it's like, it's, it's so, <laughs> the littlest things like that are just hilarious and, this movie is just fantastic, uh, all the way around. Uh, I've heard some people say it's sort of kind of like um, Naked Gun movies, but which I guess in a way, I guess that sort of comparison is, you know, fair. Um, but yeah, it, this is just uh, incredible. Uh, I think, you know, I, I really do love this film. It's a cult film, obviously. Um, and it definitely uh, deserves the recognition it has. You know, it, it wasn't beloved at first because, you know, it was came out in the summer of 1989. Uh, and so that was a huge year. Batman was the biggest movie of the year. It was Ghostbusters 2, Lethal Weapon 2. Um... Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, um, and just so many other films that this movie had no chance of being a blockbuster. And it was also one of the movies that made Orion like go bankrupt. You know, they kind of put it out there that it was going to be a huge hit, and it wasn't. Um, of course, now with home video it is, but, you know, uh, at the time, not so much. Um, you know, there's parodies of, like, you know, uh, Indiana Jones at the very beginning, you know, getting an Oscar, you know, instead of, like, like a 
ancient gold statue or anything of real, be it of real value or of just any in, uh, importance. It's just an Academy Award, basically, or of course their version, because you know you couldn't really make them uh, uh, too much of a likeness. Uh, at that time, the Academy's rules were, like, you can't, in a movie, have, like, a likeness of an Oscar. And so they had to make their own, and they had, like, the Oscars, like, is their hands in front of his crotch. You know, there's, like, no sword or anything there. So, there's that. That's just sort of, like, I guess, like, that's their joke on that. Um, <clears throat> there's also the Rambo dream sequence when, you know, George goes to save Stanley at the end. You know, he becomes real buff, and, uh. That was fantastic, and um, there's a Star Wars reference also, um, where right after uh, he, uh, Stanley gets free because he was kidnapped, because he finds his mop, he gets it, and then he uses it, and then smacking everybody around, these guys who work for Channel 8, and yet at the same time are like gangsters, so I guess at, at Channel 8 you, you become like a gangster of sorts, that's part of the deal, I guess, when you go there. Or you're a gangster or whatever it's it's so bizarre and yet just it works and fits like this in this world yes it makes sense you know and but you know he has his mop back and he swings the the mop and then you hear the lightsaber sound because it's like he's using he's swinging a lightsaber and then so they have to have that add that sound that was just funny so many other parodies, you know, uh, in this film, you know, there's the, uh, in the film, there's the, you know, Muddy for Nothing, Beverly Hillbilly song, with Dire Straits guitarist, actually performing the guitar for the song, that was like part of the condition, they could, they could only, he could only parody that song for the film, as long as the guitarist for Dire Straits came in and did the guitar and so they allowed it to happen um and also they had to call it uh, money for nothing beverly hillbillies uh, this is what we're now wanted to call it but you know it's like he, he's able to do the song so he, i guess he can't be completely picky with that that kind of situation um and, uh, and then the soundtrack of the album of UHF, which is also the soundtrack, you know, it, it didn't do too well, unfortunately. It's one of Weird Al's worst-selling albums of his entire career. <clears throat> and part of the reason was because of the failure, the financial box office failure. You know, had the movie done well, and people loved it, that no doubt the soundtrack is album of his would have done quite well also but because it didn't do well his soundtrack the, the album just you know nothing really uh, happened too much you know time went on you know of course you know people love this film uh way more now than they did before um but you know also, I love the bit of, like, you know, Conan the Librarian, where he, this guy's asking him about, like, a, about a certain book, and he picks him up, and he brings him to his face, and goes, Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? Which, of course, these days, the Dewey Decimal System isn't really necessary these days, you know, with computers and such. You go into a library to get a book, you know, just go into the computer or whatever, and there you go. Um, be it the author or the title of a book, and as that book, well, there you go. Just go there to that area, and you're good to go. <clears throat> um, it's also Gandhi 2, you know, uh, which is, then Gandhi is played by uh, the director of the film. You know, and it's just like an action movie. He's just shooting and killing people. So obviously the exact opposite of, you know, Gandhi. Um, you know, and of course, Stanley Spadowski had his show, which was huge and popular. 
you know, got fired from Channel 8, got to go to, you know, U62, and, you know, he gets to be the janitor and a TV star, you know, star of his own show and clean up afterwards, you know, it's the best of, best of both worlds for him, and you know what, good for him, he's just a nice guy, you know, he may not be the sharpest uh, uh, crayon in the tool shed, but, you know, but, you know, he, 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 He's just amazing. That's all you really need to know. He's just fantastic. And, um, yeah. <clears throat> Even Philo got to have his own thing with Secrets of the Universe, which, unfortunately, we didn't get to see too much of. But, you know, hey. There's a Geraldo Rivera um, parody that George Newman has with Town Talk. You know, you know, he starts where all the others stop. Like, sex with furniture, what do you think? And then asks an old woman that question, because, you know, she has the most life experience out of everybody there. You know, blew the lid off of, what was it, Al Capone's glove box? Yeah, really shocking, honestly. And then, of course, you know, there's um, the whole brawl that broke out, and then he announces, lesbian Nazi hookers abducted by UFOs and forced into weight loss programs. All this week on Town Talk. And then he gets hit with a chair. There's so much in this movie. I could go on and on about the various moments and various parodies they have. Um, Wheel of Fish. And, of course, Spatula City. You know, you need a spatula, just go to Spatula City. You know, that's... They just sell spatulas, and, you know, that's all. That's all you really need, right? You know, just have spatula city. There's nothing more you need. And that's just... Uh, yeah, I could go on, but it's just an amazing movie. And having the Blu-ray is awesome, you know. It has all the same features overall that, that uh, the DVD had. Unfortunately, though, the Easter egg's not on here, despite it saying so. But I, ha I having the DVD, I'm I still am able to see the, uh, uh, you know, the Easter eggs. And also, this was a two-sided disc, so I had to flip it over for the wide screen or the full screen. And you know, on the special features stuff. Uh, you know, if you are like on the full screen menu and you, or whatever, and you go to click on a special feature that's not available, he will, pro Weird Al is there, he walking around and he'll progressively get more and more uh, annoyed that you aren't taking the disc out and flipping it over to see that specific uh, feature. Yeah, it's just uh, really good. Uh, Just, I, I just love this film, you know, DVD, Blu-ray, you know, the Blu-ray looks really nice, as it should. It's also from Shout Factory. So this is another one of the, their releases. And they made a great one. It's just, I wish they actually had uh, some actual Easter eggs, even if it wasn't going to be the exact same ones for here. You know, has some of their own exclusive. Well, you know, that'd be fine. But what can you do? You know, sometimes you're not able to get certain things over for one reason or another. But you know, and some of those special or those Easter eggs were actually some like, like more like deleted scenes or sequences. So it's a shame that we didn't get to see more of that. But it's funny to see the deleted scenes and how, you know, Weird Al is talking about them and giving some introduction. He goes like, you know, you know why these scenes are deleted? Because they sucked. And basically everybody should be happy that they're not in the movie because it would have just dragged everything down and just made it just, bad. Ah. But I'm, I'm real, some of the deleted scenes we are able to see, I thought were pretty good. Um, pretty humorous, at least, you know keeping it in tone with the film. So, yeah. That's really all I have. Uh, right
right now. Um, excellent film that I enjoyed. It's a cult film. Definitely uh, deserving of that status. Uh, unfortunately, just didn't have a great chance in its initial release. Um, but, yeah, with all that said, uh, hope all of you are doing well. Hope all of you are having a great day to have, oh, have a great weekend. See you all next time. Bye.